on Stephen Michael. Did, did he work for Cohen at all, Duboff? Oh, yeah, Duboff worked for Cohen. Duboff is the one who laundered all of Cohen's lies and uh, submitted the trademark application for sex.com and was within an ace of getting it when uh, I filed the third amended complaint and sent it to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and they uh, put the trademark application on hold. Uh-huh. For some reason, nobody had done before then. That was it, you know, my, my sneaking suspicion, I don't know if I put it in the book, and I asked Steve, and Steve wouldn't confirm or disconfirm, you know, like the CIA, I don't know. But my thinking was that since, since I know that Cohen was partners with Ishai, which I believe, uh, verily, that he was, I, and since when we got sex.com, Ron Levy was getting, was, was buying at least 50000 and probably more in traffic through a straw man from sex.com. It seemed highly likely to me that Cohen, being the kind of clever guy he is, said to Ron Levy and Seth Warshawski, Seth, no paragon of virtue, you know, uh, he said, hey, guys, how about we go and show... Uh, show this Kremen guy exactly how we screw people over. You go and promise to hire lawyers for him. You hire lawyers who will throw the fight. I will give you all the traffic you need to cover the legal fees you pay to those lawyers. So that's my, that's my theory of, of uh, exactly how Ron paid for Gary's and why more importantly, why he paid for Gary's representation. Because I have never seen, as I said in the book, I have never seen anyone giving up a case um, who didn't have a drug problem like, like Katie Deemer was doing at that point when I stepped into the case. I mean, there was a motion to dismiss pending. If you don't file an opposition to a motion to dismiss, you lose, especially when there have been two other ones previously that you've lost in succession. Well, what are you doing not, not filing one? And, you know, I went down to her office on the last day, literally the last half an hour before it was to be filed. And I asked her, I said, do you have anything to file? And she said, no. I said, well, then I'm going to file something here. I borrow your copy machine. You know, so uh, we made the copies. And, uh, you know, I went down to the courthouse and, and I filed the third amended complaint and that saved the case. But it, there was no explanation, no explanation, because... Katie Deemer appeared to be a rational, intelligent, capable lawyer. So I could not understand why she was throwing the fight at that point. I mean, it was, you know, but it happened. And, uh, and I, like I said, I couldn't get an answer out of Cohen. I said, Cohen, did you, did you pay Ron Levy to, to hire those lawyers to throw the fight? And uh, he, uh, he wouldn't admit it, but uh, it was the only explanation that made real sense to me. And, uh, and Ron was, was amazingly accommodating. You know, the story had always been that he had put $150,000 into the defense and that if Gary won, he was going to come around and try and collect it. And in no way did he do so. Not at all. I mean, Gary was really, really afraid of it. Um, but it didn't happen. And in fact, he put a great deal on the table. Maybe not the best of the deals that were available, but it was a very good deal. I mean, four hundred fifty thousand a month, and uh, and forty percent of uh, of uh, all the additional revenue that could be generated. I mean, that was a pretty good deal. It was a great deal, and revenue. and the great thing about Ron Levy, as someone I've known for for many many years, is that if he if he tells you that deal and offers you that deal, he's a man of his word. He's gonna he's gonna send you that money. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, he had it all written up. It was a nice little three-page contract. He handed it to us, and it all, you know, it all looked fine to me. It all looked fine to me, but, uh, you know, there wasn't really any hope of doing it because it's, you know, that's, that's the thing uh, is uh, that sex.com, it's, uh, it exerted a fascination um, like the, the one ring in, in The Lord of the Rings. And, yeah. Um, it just it exerted that fascination. Um, it it has, you know, the way I the way I see it is that that you know you're grown up from childhood 
And, you know, they, there's the story of Alibaba and the 40 Thieves, and the treasure is available to whoever who has the open sesame. It's a word. There's a deep, deep myth about a word that will make you incalculably wealthy. This is a deep, deep myth. And that was what captured me. That was what captured Gary. And when we started out, I really think we, maybe, maybe I was deluding myself, but I really did think that Gary shared my ideal that we would get hold of the word and that we would transform its energy and make it into something decent and respectable. And that um, I really did believe, as I articulated uh, throughout the case, I really did believe that there was more money in it. Uh, and uh, I was terribly disappointed uh, when Gary showed absolutely no interest in pursuing that avenue of commerce, which I, I still think it, it could, it could it, at this point, it's, it's lost enough as its preeminence within the world that it, it probably could not be done. But at that time, I really thought that it would have been easy. I mean, you know, we had an appointment. We could have had an appointment with anyone we wanted to who was in the world of publishing. Yeah, we had an appointment with Benedict Passion um, to come to his house in Hollywood and, and, and talk about it. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a guy who's, who's made a fortune uh, uh, well, he made a fortune on, on many different things, but on the other hand, he has a real passion for erotic art and has published a tremendous amount of beautiful erotic art. And uh, I really felt that that avenue of, uh, what do you call it? decent and reasonable uh, erotic expression had a lot of potential, but, you know, it, uh, it, it didn't have as much potential uh, in Gary's mind, I think, once he saw how the industry worked and how you could just be getting really big checks uh, for selling text links and banners. But ultimately, I, I thought that y if you look at it, you say, well, you know, what did Ron Levy have? Well, you know, Ron Levy, I mean, it may not be a man of tremendous style, but, you know, they call him fantasy man. And he did know how to weave that out. I mean, his, his, his sites took advantage of the visual power of the medium. And amazingly enough, during Gary's tenure at sex.com, it was possibly one of the least interesting adult sites on the web. It was really amazing. <laughs> it was like, wow, this is dull. You know? And yeah. goofy ideas that, that sounded fine, like generate a bunch of third-level domains like gay.sex.com. It never caught on. Third-level domains never really have caught on anywhere. You know? It was like, okay. So... It, I, I, yeah, it would have been. Yeah. Sorry, hang on a sec. <laughs>